Hello and welcome to Stylize Hair Shader for Unreal Engine 4. Now when you open the map here you will see there's a whole bunch of different hair materials on the same hair mesh. Uh, that's just different uh, instances of the same master material and you can see I've been able to tone the hair differently quite easily using some of the settings in the shader so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of that. Now how I made these Hairs was in 3ds Max using bones and planes and just bending things around the head. Um, then to make the strands, I used something called Hair Strand Designer, which you can find on ArtStation. Uh, I'll put a link in the video for that. So I'm just going to show you the master material here, real quick. Uh, I don't want to give too much away because it took a while to make this, but it basically it gets uh, your main colours and channels them through an RGB mask and then it does a few various tricks to get frizz map in there and also some anisotropic bending uh, mixes a lot of things up through lerps and other math functions and then spits out your anisotropic based hair shader so that's what that does and from that I've managed to make some instances for each of these hair kinds. So I'll just, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'll just copy this one as well. I'm going to call this demo 2. I've made a few videos before this but this is a more up to date video. So I'm just going to double click this instance now. So you don't have to go into the master material and change anything. It's all kind of good to go to just go straight into the, the material instance and make the changes that you want. So I've got anisotropic bending, which changes a few things. Oh, I need to apply material first. All right, I'm just going to save that and just unclick so that I didn't see that outline. So anisotropic bending is just, it's pushing the pushing the normal map round a little bit and get, giving you a kind of different shine. And this is good not only for hair, but things like fur and uh, like felt, uh, kind of thin fabric, uh, like suede. So you can use that for things like that as well. Uh, you get extra root coverage here for bringing the, the root tones further round. Uh, and that's controlled by this mask here. So you can see the green tones here are controlling the root. The red tones are controlling these two base colors where uh, if you look at the red channel in a grayscale form, so like if you take this into Photoshop, you've got the green channel, the red channel and the blue channel, but they're actually like grayscale, right? Zero to two, five, five. So if anything's kind of towards black, it's going to use this base color one and anything towards white, it's going to use base color two. That way you get the mix in the red channel, right? And then the root is controlled by the green channel. So you can see I can change the color of the root here, like to red, just for example, in case you wanted, you know, some funky root color. Um, let's go for like blue for the tip. Right, so you can you can stylize this pretty much any way you want to. And it can look quite nice. So if you've got your own character with your own hair planes and things like that on it, one thing it does depend on it at this time being is the uh, your hair strands being from top to bottom. So there's no directional map support just yet, but with the hair strand designer that I've created, I'm gonna generate like directional maps uh, if the hair strands go in a certain direction and that should in turn affect uh, how this whole system works. So I'll make a shader update to support that when I've got round to that point in time. Um, so you've got things like the scatter level and that's quite nice for the metallic sort of effect, uh, the level and some modifiers. A lot of these, they're not ex exactly self-explanatory but you'll just have to sort of mess around with the settings until you get that look that you want. Shininess, yeah, it does kind of give it away. Um, you've also got frizz affecting shininess here, so if you take that down, then it's not going to affect as much. But you get that nice shininess that you often see in hairs in real life. You get these little 
specular bits and that's just driven through a generic like noise map here so it's just little grey uh, grayscale sort of pips that are stretched vertically a little bit and you can also change that here so you can change how, how much that tiling happens on Y and on X and that gives you that extra kind of hair look um, if that's too high obviously just bring down the shininess and like spec level you can see there's a very subtle effect with spec level and it's it's actually part of the shader and I just thought I'd give you control of that but I don't see very much difference with it but it's there scatter level opacity level for the obviously the cutout range um, the frizz power exponent in case you want to mess around with that boosters uh, they all do kind of similar things and it's like fine tuning uh, effects frizz effects effects specular now not all things will do things right away because of the, the sort of low intensity of it but this one does so again this specular spec level and specular they don't do too much but you'll see they do very subtle things and good for fine tuning control so that's really it so you've got your bending here for a different kind of style of shading um, just frame that you can see that I'm getting like a stronger anisotropy around the root there and I think it's just nice for different you know different looks if you want that really shiny look like that and that's really nice as well shame this outline keeps appearing I wonder if that's uh, something you can change anyway uh, but there you go so it's quite easy to make your own hairs once you've got your base set up and your textures applied in here you just want to bring in your own textures uh, as I say it doesn't support directional maps just yet it'd be good to hear some feedback from anyone who wants to use a directional map and maybe uh, you know get a sample to me where I can try and introduce it into this and that way I can do an update because until I get round to it then um, I don't really know what to go off just yet uh, I know the I know the rough standard, but it'd be good to sort of have a good case study. But there you go. There's some nice shiny hair. Uh, you can control shininess and things like that. Uh, your scatter level to sort of bring down that overall glow. And there's various modifiers and things. The anisotropic bending for a different look. And yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much what you're getting here. You can make up all kinds of hair tones from this, you know, this material instance, and I think it looks pretty good. So thanks for watching. Again, I'll put links in the description for uh, the hair strand designer if you want to use that for your own hairs, and it's a pretty good solution. You don't have to use like uh, X Gen or anything like that to make these hair strands. You bring your UVs over the uh, the hair strand texture and then you can make your hairs. So thanks for watching. Bye.